All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome here at Faith Love Fellowship Church. We're delighted to have you with us. Amen. Before we start our worship this morning, uh, we want to pray, of course, but also I want to share with you a little bit uh, that's something that's on my heart. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We worship you. We honor you. This is your day. This is the day that we uh, set our hearts to your face and uh, we carry it the rest of the week. And uh, we thank you for these times of refreshing in your presence. We thank you for these times of intimacy uh, in your presence, Lord. It means everything to us. You are the stability of our lives. Uh, you are that one, that, that one blessing. You are a blessing. You are that one blessing that remains constant in our lives. You never change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you have promised that you would never fail us, never leave us, never forsake us. And Lord, it's the foundation upon which we live our lives, and we are grateful. Have your way in the service. Help us through the praise and worship to honor the name of Jesus, to honor our Heavenly Father, and, uh, and then to uh, minister life to your people. We thank you for it. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I got asked to do a funeral yesterday, actually, and when I spoke to the family, it was pretty much cut and dry. They didn't want anything. The fellow who passed away uh, really didn't have any, uh, as far as I know, talking to the family, any foundation of faith. He really just wanted to be cremated and have a barbecue. That, that was a quote from his daughter. And, um, but I spoke to his wife, and uh, uh, his wife said that he, um, he, he liked the Our Father. And uh, could I uh, incorporate the Our Father prayer, the Lord's Prayer, in the service? And so I did. And I preached. I always do. And I gave an altar call. I always do. I'm, I'm not only there to preach to the dead. I'm there to preach to the living. And, uh, and uh, you know, if, if he, no disrespect, you don't know who I'm talking about. But if the man is in heaven, he would want me to preach to his family. If the man is in hell, he would want me to preach to his family. So I don't know. I'm no one's judge. God is more than faithful. Amen. And he, he, he but I, I, so we did the Lord's Prayer, and everybody placed in the place pretty much prayed, recited with me. And it made me think about it. You know, it's one of the most uh, beautiful and selfless prayers when you think about it. And except for maybe one part, uh, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful prayer for, for us to pray. You know, first of all, Jesus is the one who taught the disciples to pray. He said, our Father. So it starts with the fact that we can know God as our Father. If we accept Jesus, we can know God as our Father. And then we can have relationship and intimacy and an and open door. Amen. Heaven's, heaven's ear turned towards us. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And, and then it continues. Amen. And... Um, it talks about, uh, you know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. In other words, our daily need, the strength to do today, the wisdom, the understanding. It's beautiful. And it says, give us today our daily bread and lead us not to temptation, but forgive us from, or what does it talk, how does it say? When I break it up, it's hard. Um, uh, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us or debt against us. Amen. And lead us not temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not temptation. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the glory. Amen. No, not to be disrespectful, but uh, if I break it up, I can't remember. The only point is he talks about, you know, deliver us from the evil one. And that was before Jesus went to the cross. Because now we have been delivered from the evil one. We don't have to ask God to, oh God, deliver us. He has already delivered us amen we just need to realize that he has and to walk in the light of that deliverance amen there, there's no chains on us once you accept jesus all chains are broken and all you know all past generational curses i've heard it for years you know my father did this my uncle my grandfather everybody when you met jesus you had a complete blood transfusion amen. and everything in your family line is broken so don't believe for it because it was in your past. Well, my family has a history of high blood pressure, strokes, uh, heart attack, or whatever, but it stopped with you. When you accepted Jesus into your heart, it stopped with you. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Amen? Don't believe for it. Don't expect it. 
Amen? Amen. Every time there's a symptom or any time there's a, a, a thought of it, you just thank God, Lord, I thank you that the blood of Jesus has washed me, cleansed me. Amen. And I'm whole, I am healed, I am free. Amen? Amen. Come on, my brothers and sisters, you with me? Amen. And so, even though it's a beautiful prayer, we, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with it praying that prayer for ourselves. Because it is a very intimate prayer. To know God as our Father means everything. Amen? He's good. He's merciful. He's all-powerful. He knows everything. He cares for you so much that He's willing to give His life for you and for me. Hallelujah. And He wants us to know Him. He wants us to understand Him and walk with Him and, and care uh, about His presence. Amen? Amen? I don't know many mothers or fathers who want to be ignored by their children. Uh, is that any fun at all? No. To, to not even be acknowledged, to just be ignored. Nobody likes that. And our Heavenly Father is love. So it hurts when His children ignore Him. When, when, you know, when people refuse to accept His gift of salvation in His only begotten Son. Can we imagine how big that sacrifice was to God? Amen? And he was willing to make it. This is God in the flesh. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So there's not, well, the Father sent the Son to do something. No, God was in Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. As the Holy Spirit, God, the triune God, Jesus said, the Bible says, the fullness of the Godhead, bodily, bodily form. Are you with me? And so God was willing to pay the price to die so that we can have relationship and fellowship with him. And so take that as a, just stirring in your heart. Don't let time go by without spending time in His presence and blessing Him and thanking Him and spending time in His Word. His Word is His will. His Word is His revelation of what His plan for our lives is. Amen? And, and a lot of people read books, self-help books. I hope they help. But we are fed by the Word of God. We who have accepted Jesus and are born again, who are alive unto God, those books can feed our intellect, but they can't feed the real us. They can't bring eternal courage and comfort and strength and wisdom. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? So we are so grateful for these times, and we're going to sing these songs, and they're going to reflect this today. That's what I wanted to share with you, because it's going to reflect it. So I want you to sing the songs, but in the light of the fact that God is desiring our fellowship and our, uh, our, our desiring Him and wanting Him, and then give yourself over to it. Amen? Just tell Him how much He means to you, how He's still the most important blessing in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
brothers and sisters, this verse describes it so beautifully. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voices, the year of jubilee, for out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Amen? There's another verse in scripture that I have very near and dear to my heart. It talks about when his one of his children is, is struggling, that he his eyes are flames of fire. The heavens bow before him, and he comes to rescue that one who needs him. Amen? Amen. Such a father. Such an amazing Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 And these are images that God gives us. See, the Word of God, I, I've said this before in teaching. We don't see words. We see images. And so when we sing this, behold, He comes riding on the clouds. We, we can see it. Amen. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. And times of difficulty in your life, you take the Word of God and you speak the Word of God over your circumstances and your situations. And then you see, the Bible says He's moved with compassion. And compassion is not idle. It just doesn't sit from a distance and say, you know, I feel for you, brother. I really feel for you, sister. No, that's empathy. Are you with me? Compassion is... I must do something about this. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm purposed to do something about this situation. And the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro across the whole earth, Hallelujah. seeking whom he may prove himself strong on behalf of. And what he's looking for is somebody to stand up and say, The Lord, you are my strength, and you are my rock, and you are my fortress. And though what I'm facing is very difficult, and as far as people are concerned, impossible, you are the God who there is nothing impossible to you. Amen. Thank you. And his eyes rest upon you, you and Lord. he moves all of heaven, all of heaven's Thank power you. on your behalf. Thank Amen. You, Amen. Glory to God. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? Amen. Now some of us may think that that la 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 there, you know, what's that doing in a soul like that? But you know how it, a, a child is when they're in the arms of their mother or father and they know that they're safe? Amen. There's just the carefreeness about it. Amen. Isn't it true? Amen. They don't have to be concerned. They don't have to worry about who's paying the bills. They don't have to think about where the food's coming from. They don't have to think that somehow they're in danger. They're very content. And a lot of times, they just will sing. Amen? And this is what God is desiring us, that we believe so securely that He's a good Father, that He's got us in every area, that He's made everything available that we will ever need. Amen? We don't have to worry where the money is going to come from. We don't have to worry about the future. We don't have to be anxious about anything. We're actually forbidden from being anxious. So this song is so fitting and beautiful. Every once in a while, just rub it in the devil's face. When you feel like you're being oppressed, when you feel like it's dark everywhere around you, just start la, 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 la. Are you with me, my brothers and sisters? Just when I said it, you can feel the anointing, can't you? It's God wants you to know, don't, don't, don't trouble yourself. Amen? That's right. He says, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't do it. You believe in God, believe in me. And just go your way, la, la, la. Amen? Amen. 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 It's the truth, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen.
sisters. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated here in the church. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. I have one, but thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Very kind of you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Harry. See, compassion. See? Compassion. Love in action. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if I asked him to, he'd have gone and got me one. <laughs> God bless. Thank you for illustrating my point, Harry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Glory to God. Amen. Well, this morning in our bulletins, just take a quick look. We want to pray for the countries that uh, God put on our heart to pray for. This is October 9th, 2022. It's amazing. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Amen. And as always, I never communicate with Miss Vanessa what to put in the bulletin. And uh, this bulletin comes to me earlier in the week, and it's just amazing to me. You know, we're talking about how our Father. Behold what manner of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And that is who we are. Amen. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. And then another quote says, remember who you are. Don't compromise for anyone, for any reason. You are a child of the almighty God. Live that truth. Amen. Take that with you. Clip it out if you want. Put it on your mirror. Remind yourself ongoing. Amen. That you are a child of the almighty God. Amen. And he cares for you with an everlasting love. Amen. Um, would you find that scripture for me that I mentioned before about the Lord um, riding, not riding on the, on the wind that we sang, but the other one that talks about when a child is in need. And um, I can't remember exactly, but uh, please find it for me just so I can reference it to everybody. So, um, we began a number of months ago praying for the different uh, countries within the 1040 window. We also want to remind you to please pray for the uh, situation in Ukraine and Russia, other places that are war-torn around the world, where people are in bondage and struggling and oppressed, where the gospel is being um, uh, hindered in any way, shape, or form, to pray for, for the leading of the Holy Spirit to open doors that no man can open and close doors that no man can close. Amen. And protect the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's all about. Amen. And then, of course, pray for these, the United States of America, our, our great country. Hallelujah. So, if you would join with me, we're, we're continuing to pray for the 1040 window countries with a prayer for tons of Tunisia. Here we go. Heavenly Father, although Christians in Tunisia make up barely a quarter of 1% of the population, a quarter of 1% of the population, and most of these are non-Tunzians, we lift these believers up to you and pray that you will strengthen them with might in their inner man so that they may have the endurance they need to live by faith in the midst of extreme persecution. Lord of the harvest, please raise up workers to reach the millions of unevangelized people in Tunisia. We ask you to cause the government to recognize the Tunisian church. Please change the hearts of the government leaders to allow Christian literature to be openly distributed. Thank you for blessing the work of Christian media and causing their influence to spread throughout the land. Please increase their impact 
and give those in the media wisdom to determine the most effective way to reach those people groups who have never heard the gospel. Open doors to evangelism so your word can go forth with the power of your Holy Spirit. Open the ears of the people to hear and open their eyes to see your glorious goodness. May the name of Jesus be exalted in Tunzia. Help them to know your love and the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Humbles you, doesn't it? Humbles me to think of 1% of, a, of such a massive population are Christian and the persecution that they must be enduring. But God is continually depositing grace, supernatural strength to accomplish. <laughs> and they're moving forward. Amen. There, there's no backing up. The Bible says when, when Paul spoke to Timothy, he says, you've not been given a spirit of fear, Amen. but a power, love, and a sound mind. And don't be afraid of their faces. Amen? And, and hallelujah, we're so grateful and thankful for to be counted amongst the family where, where folks like this are, are part of the family. Amen? And we need to pray. We need to seek God and, and ask him, Lord, bless your people that love you around the world. Whether it's uh, one, whether it's a few, whatever it is, bless them, help them to be effective, help them to stand fast, to hold fast their confession of faith without wavering. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, be aware that um, MyFaithVotes.org is a wonderfully informative website, which you can find information concerning upcoming elections in your state, articles about upcoming bills in Congress, of which you should be aware, and much more. Follow their prompts to find the information needed regarding important upcoming election dates and absentee voting, etc. They've done the work for you. We have told you that we have uh, been granted the uh, blessing of being an operations, Operation Christmas Child, a drop-off point. And so uh, we have shoeboxes available for you. There are pamphlets that are available to go in the shoeboxes. They are very strict about what we should put in and what we should not. And we ask you and, and those of you that want to participate, uh, and as I talk to the ministers tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, we have a luncheon, I'm going to encourage them also to participate with us, but follow the rules, amen? Don't put anything in that they request that we not put in and uh, fill those shoeboxes with uh, blessings, amen? One of the things that seems to be very popular are shoes. Uh, of any kind, uh, socks, shoes, things like that. I know it's hard to know what size you want to put in there, but just do your best to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? And uh, and I'm sure that uh, if, if they receive uh, lots of shoes, that the children can switch among themselves if they need to, to get the sizes that they need. Amen? Amen. But uh, the Spirit of God knows and uh, can be a great blessing to many of them. Hallelujah. Um, they'll tell you as well, <clears throat> if you go to the website, you get an idea of, of many of the locations where the children, uh, the boxes are going. And sometimes you may think, well, a hat and gloves, you know, if the children are in Africa, what do they need hats and gloves for? And we heard reports of, of uh, all kinds of things. In some places in the mountainous areas, it's very hot in the daytime, but at night it gets very cold and others where there was a boy who uh, wore a pair of gloves that he received in a shoebox, and his job was his family were potters and he had to take the pot out of the oven area and put it on the cooling rack and many times with his bare hands. So here he received a pair of gloves and it was talk about a godsend to protect his hands so that he could do what he needed to do. And so God has a way. So just be led of the spirit, whatever you have on your heart, put it in your shoe boxes and, uh, and let God get it to the right, the right children, okay? Amen. We appreciate you and we thank you for it. All right, let's uh, receive this morning's offering. Uh, thank God for it. Hallelujah. Uh, many people are responding to Tithely, which is the online giving. Uh, uh, fwlf.com um, www of course and there you can give securely through a ministry called Tithely and many are and we appreciate the faithfulness of, of God's people and then we get people who mail their, their tithes in uh, regularly uh, and we appreciate them as well and uh, each and every one I do my best to bring them with me and when we pray this prayer over uh, our offerings I always have in my heart to include those who give uh, through Tithely, those 
who send checks and those who uh, are remembering to uh, continue to remember us, amen, and to remember the work of the Lord here at Faith Love Fellowship and the ministries that we support around the world. Hallelujah. Amen. I just make it nice and easy. The ministries that we support, I put them on my credit card. And that way it automatically goes. I get an alert about the fifth of the month with one, about the 15th of the month with other. And, and they just let me know that, you know, they, they, re, they received that, the blessing and we appreciate it. I have to think about writing checks or missing a, a, missing a month. And so it, it's a great blessing. And then I know that they're getting on a regular basis. Hallelujah. I like to receive on a regular basis, don't you? Yes. Amen. I do. I, I like a good meal. And thank God I married the best. So I get a good meal every day, pretty much three times a day. And if I needed more than that, and I don't need more than that, she would provide four or five times a day, okay? And, and Nick will say, yes, I do know that to be true. Are you with me? Hallelujah. And, and it means a lot. And, and so we thank God for that, that, same, that same idea of, of, of faithfulness, of the finances coming in, so we can continue to do, do the work that God has called us to do, and we appreciate you. Amen. Would you stand with me for a moment? Lift your offering before the Lord, and let's make our declaration of faith. Amen. Ready? This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow because I love God and want to see Faith Love Fellowship continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for good opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are open because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, there are other ways of giving as well besides financially. And um, uh, I'm sure we don't want to embarrass anybody um, because I don't want them to lose their reward from God. Amen. Thank you, sir. But um, um, uh, very kindly, uh, somebody stepped up to uh, sand and, and prime and paint the two front doors. Mm -hmm. If you, when you came in, uh, they look extraordinary and beautiful. Amen. We have a family who is kind enough and gracious enough to come and clean the church and vacuum the church. And uh, you know, there's lots of ways you give. Hallelujah. And God no, takes note of all of them. Amen. Because you're, you're not only uh, serving the church, you're serving God. You're serving God's people. Hallelujah. And God takes notice of that. And God bless you and reward you for your uh, kindness and for your um, uh, thoughtfulness. Amen. It means a lot. Stretch your hand out towards the cellar offering and let's bless him. Father, thank you that you provide all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you always will. We're not troubled. We're not afraid. Hallelujah. Our future is secure because you are our future. We ask you to bless your people and continue to sow into their lives. Hallelujah. So they can continue to have all of their needs met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that your work on the earth can continue to flourish. We give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. Did anybody find that scripture? Okay, I'll have to find it. I'll find it eventually. So, let's get right into the scriptures. Amen? Let's get into the Word of God. Uh, let me find a scripture that I can give you so that you can at least turn to it and uh, get ready. John chapter 15. Let's go there, John chapter 15. We're talking about getting to know our Father for ourselves. Amen? And many of you can say, I know Him, and that's awesome. It's wonderful. But how many know we can all uh, get to know Him more? Because He is so... What's the right word? It's hard even to describe Him. Amen? His, his love 
The Bible even says how wide, how deep, how far, how broad, you know? And, 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 and to know him and to be known of him is basically a lifelong uh, adventure for us. Hallelujah. Uh, to know him in all of his fullness, it's pretty rem remarkable. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about, and I mentioned it before, in the Old Testament, there are many names. Some of them start with Jehovah, but El Shaddai, and there's others as well, that, uh, that they are all representative of his nature in, in a part, in a measure. Uh, Jehovah Shalom means he, the Lord your peace. So he is the God of peace, but he's also Jehovah Sekenu, the God of righteousness right standing amen and uh, Jehovah Nisi is the Lord our banner in other words he's our fight he's our conqueror he's our defense amen and Jehovah Rapha the Lord is our healer so it's really you would say well I know him but I want you to know he's a lot deeper than we realize he's a lot wider He's a lot longer. Are you with me? And, and it is really a lifelong journey. Not that you have to wait that long, but just continue to press in. Continue to press in because he wants to reveal his, himself fully to you. The Bible says that he wants you to know him as he really is. And what an, what an invitation. Amen. But and I'm not knocking you or me or anybody, but you go at your own pace. So if, if you want more, come on. Amen. You, amen? amen. If you if you want to if you want to not you, but I'm just il illustrating a point. If you're happy with crawling, then crawl. If you're happy with uh, just laying there, then just lay there. You with me? But if you're if you're happy with walking, then then walk. And if you're happy with power walking, then power walk. But if you're happy with running, then run. And if you're happy with sprinting, then sprint. Are you with me? God is not going to tell you, oh, 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 no, no, no. He, come on. Hallelujah. As a man or woman, purpose in their heart. That's how we decide. It's as we decide. Amen. And God wants us to come on. Come on to me. All you are heavy laden. Think about it. How does God want us to come to him? He says, come unto me, all you are labor, who labor, heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Just lay there at a distance and stay there. That's not what he wants you to do. Crawl. Not if you want your situation to change. You're going to have to get, get up and get moving. All right? Come. And he says, you know, when I was younger, my, my dad, uh, my father, uh, used to whistle uh, for us. And, and I can't do it, I'm not a great whistler, but he had a specific whistle. And it was a piercing whistle. It had a little melody to it. And when he whistled, or when he called my name, if I was upstairs and he called my name, it wasn't, what do you want? In a minute, Dad. It was like, I want you present right here, right now. That's the way it was, uh, you know? And it was because it was something that he, it was important. And he wanted me there. Well, it's the same thing. God says, come unto me. And he doesn't expect you to come. Well, you know, let me take care of this. Let me, let me meander over here. Let me, no, 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 no. Move yourself. Get yourself in this spot here. And what he's saying is what I'm offering you is life transforming. So make it your priority to present yourself. The Bible says, and we, we read it in our scripture, present yourself as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So when he says present yourself, he's not saying when you get around to it, after many, many detours, when you think it's a priority, no, you see, you realize, he says, it's, it's my priority, present yourself. Are you with me? And when we present ourselves to God, it's awesome. It's always wonderful. It's encouraging. It's comforting. It's strengthening. Amen. To hear his voice is, is, is more important than anything else. To know that you are his and he is yours and you're led by the spirit of God. Are you with me? And that all the promises of God towards you are yes and amen. Are you with me? So... You know, part of it, we've talked about getting to know our Father for ourselves, building confidence in Him through His Word. 
is, is priority. And then energizing, equipping ourselves through prayer, one-on-one -on -one fellowship with Him. These are ways that we, that we press in. Hallelujah. Is, is mostly, number one, is to build confidence in Him through His Word. His Word, God takes His Word. It's hard again. The, I don't have the words. His Word is all important to Him. Amen? Yeah. Heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word remains eternal. And God has given us His Word. Are you with me? Yeah. And He stands behind His Word and always will. And nothing and no one and no circumstance, no situation can avail against His Word. So He's telling us, I need you to build your confidence in me through my word. And speak my word. Think my word. Hear my word. Are you with me? Amen. And then energize. Nick did a marvelous job. Remember a couple weeks ago? He said, with all spirit you blow up, all word you dry up, but spirit and word you grow up. It was. And so, you know, spend time in the Word, absolutely. But you have to spend time with the author of the Word to pick up the spirit with which he's giving it to you. Jesus had to rebuke his disciples a couple of times. And he said to them, you don't know what spirit you're of. They gathered together and he was being persecuted. And, and one of them said, why don't we call fire down from heaven? And Jesus said to him, you don't know what spirit you're of. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God loves the world. Amen. God doesn't want to con con condemn the world. God doesn't want to consume the world. Amen. He loves the world. He gave his son as an outward display, the only gift that could possibly pay the price. Now what he wants is people to come to salvation. The word of God bears it out. Does, does God want any human being, past, present, and future, to go to hell no matter how evil and how perverse or how blasphemous they are towards God? The Bible says God wants every man to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ is the only mediator between God and man. Does God get some kind of sadistic pleasure out of seeing people go to hell? No, the Bible says he takes no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. Even though people choose to be destroyed, refuse to believe God, and are violent against Him and against His people and prospering His word from going into other places, if they die and go to hell, God takes no pleasure in that. Do they deserve it? Yes. But was there hope for them? Yes. Was there help for them? Yes. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And there is no one, no one that is beyond the realm of the help and the hope that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there are many recorded, many in the Bible, others in, throughout history, of people who were so twisted, so dark, so de demonic, so, so twisted and bent against God, and they had an experience or revelation and their hearts were completely transformed and their lifestyles were completely radically changed. Amen? That's how big the love of God is. Glory to God. That's how big the righteousness of God is. How big the peace of God is. How big the healing power of God is. Amen? And how victorious God is. It doesn't matter what battle he faces. He's victorious. I've said it many, many times. He will never be defeated. He doesn't even know the meaning of the word defeat. Neither should you and I. Because we're connected. Hallelujah. The Bible tells you, greater is he who's in me than he who's in the world. Oh man, but you don't know what the devil's doing. No, I don't care what the devil's doing. I know who's in me. And that's your job and my job to build confidence in him through his word and through prayer. Prayer, really, there's, the Bible says praying with all manner of prayer. 
So there's many, and we've preached on prayer before. There's, there's lots of different types of prayer. You know, there's intercession to pray for somebody else. Your heart is moved to help somebody. That's great. And then petitions and supplications for yourself, for your own needs. And, and, but how many know that's just like fringes? The majority of our prayer is just fellowship with God. Speak to him and let him speak to you. And the number one way he speaks is through his word. Amen? So don't be listening, you know, for God to speak because he's going to speak to you through his word. And it doesn't matter where you read, he can speak what you need through, your, you've turned your heart to him. And he will speak to you. And he'll give you direction and comfort and encouragement. You don't have to be afraid of the presence of God. He's not going to demand you do something that goes against, you know, uh, what's right. He's, he's not a manipulator. He's not trying to get you to do something for his benefit. Amen? Everything he does is for your benefit and for the benefit of other people. Amen? Yeah. So it's, it's wrong thinking to think somehow he's going to demand you to do something that, that you're going to really not want to do or, or really don't, uh, you, you just, it's not in your heart to do. It's too hard. I've got to change. Yeah, in some cases you have to change. Come on, I've taught you this many times before. God does want to take some things away from you. Because I've heard people tell me all the time, oh, to trust God, I've got I to gotta live differently. I've got I to gotta change certain things in my life. I've got to stop this. I've got to stop that. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Because he wants to take away frustration and anger, bitterness, loneliness, hatred, migraines, heart, heart attacks, and, and he wants to take them away. Hallelujah. Not the real you. He created you fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. He just wants to take away those things that are going to make you outside of the image that he has for your life. And the image he has for your life is a walking, living, breathing blessing. Amen. That's the truth. And that's what he's done on our behalf. He's a good father. Are you with me? Come on, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's the truth. So build confidence in him through his word and energize yourself. Equipping ourselves through prayer with one-on-one -on -one fellowship with him. You with me? I'm reminded that, again, you do it at your own pace. Energizing. If you feel as though you have no energy, then you need to take this very seriously and start really putting time into one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God. You know, Mark was kind enough, many blessings. Mark is a blessing to us as well. But, you know, he gave me this wireless um, receiver transmitter in the guitar so I don't have to run chords anymore because I'm notorious for stepping on the cord and pulling it out of my guitar. So now there's a wireless system here. And the only thing I have to remember is after use, I have to plug it in the charger. Because after a while, it'll, the battery inside of it will die. It's intended to be recharged many times, correct? And, and the, the tablets that we're using for the praise team, they're the same thing. They're, they're a great blessing to us. But at the end of the day, I've got to go home and I have a wall of plugs and plug them in, charge them up again. Are you with me? That's the way these things work. I told you I've used the illustration of my boat, you know, of a boat battery. You got to plug in a lawnmower battery. If you expect that battery to give to serve you, you've got to plug it in from time to time. Well, God says the same thing. If you are not plugged into him, your battery, so to speak, will drain out. And eventually what happens to those two things, that, that receiver and that transmitter, if they go dead? If these tablets that have great ability, if they go dead, if the battery in your car goes dead, if the battery in your boat goes dead, if you yourself go dead, what, what good are you? The Bible says you've, you've lost your usefulness. They're basically, hold the door open with it. Because it's certainly not going to do the job that it was created to perform. So that's why God is saying, this is not 
open to suggestion. You must build your confidence in him through his word and energize yourself. Equip yourselves through prayer and one-on-one -on -one fellowship. It's per plugging in. I've done it. I know it's childlike and, and kiddie, but you know, the Bible says God wills men everywhere lift up holy hands. And, and when you lift up hands like this besides touchdown, you know what you look like? A plug that plugs into, the, into an outlet. Correct? There are two prongs. And the, the prongs have to plug into, a, into an outlet that is receiving power. Well, God is the power source. And if we don't plug into him on a regular basis, we're going to drain. And then we start to wonder why we're running down and why our, our talk is horrible. We're thinking wrong. Come on. Now, if you want to you want to move forward at a, at, a, at a snail's pace, then crawl. You know, I, uh, you know, I'll just give enough juice to get it one percent. Plug in, okay, unplug. So I got one percent. Come on, it's up to you. But if you plug in and you spend time plugged in, you re he'll recharge you to a hundred percent. Are you with me? And we're not batteries. Don't get me wrong, but we have the ability to live at a hundred percent God desires us to live at a hundred percent how many know Jesus lived at a hundred percent but follow read what the Bible says what was Jesus's normal operation he stayed plugged in he got up early and he plugged in and all during the day he stayed in relationship with his father Asking, drawing, receiving. Amen? He said it better than I ever could. I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. So he's connected. Amen? And truthfully with Jesus, he never disconnected. He was connected. And we that's what God has called us to. Amen? Come on. Amen. We're supposed to live like Jesus. We're supposed to think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus. And if he was plugged in all the time, that's what we have to do. And if again, if we do it as, you know, once, you know, once every couple of days, it's not going to cut it. And if we do it, you know, well, maybe once, uh, uh, you know, for 15 minutes uh, a day, it's not going to cut it, my brothers and sisters. You, you got to plug in every day and as much of it as you possibly can. You don't have to be afraid of over, overcharging. You know what happens when you overcharge? Are you ready for this? Fresh from heaven. You know what happens when you overcharge? You overflow. Oh, is that awesome or what? Amen? You don't, you, you overflow. How many know Jesus lived in overflow. Jesus. Amen. Everywhere I, I go, I move. Everywhere, every move I make, I'm making you. You know? Jesus lived in overflow. How many know that's, that's available to us? Jesus walking through a crowd one day, and a woman who had an unbearable issue of blood for many years, spent everything she had, was poked, prodded, and tested by every physician, heard of Jesus. She came in the, in the massive crowd, and she reached as far as she can get, and then she got on the ground and began to crawl the best she could, only because of so many people. For she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, the very bottom, the cuff of his pants, so to speak, if I can just touch him, she was confident that this thing that had plagued her for so many years, that was so overwhelming to her, that cost her everything and hurt her horribly. She suffered, it says she suffered of many physicians and was no better but worse. When she touched the hem of his garment, what happened? That overflow power flowed into her. Was it a little bit of overflow or was it like massive overflow? Massive. Because she said immediately she knew that she was healed of that infirmity. An infirmity that she suffered 14 or 15 years, spent everything she had, went to every specialist and was poked, prodded, and tested with everything. 
that poor woman, what she endured. But she heard of Jesus. And she said, Amen? Confidence. She said, If I could just touch the hem of his garment. And then she went after it. I'm sure she moved fast. For as long as, with, this, with whatever she endured, whatever was limiting her, I'm sure she moved to get, I don't know if she lived, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we think sometimes, well, <clears throat> she lived, you know, in the house right next to the street. So she walked out her front door, and there, there he was. God timed it just perfect. Who knows? A woman might have come from 50 miles away. And she heard of Jesus. And they said, he's in such and such a location. And she made up her mind, I'm going to get there as fast as I can. Because if I can touch the hem of his garment, I can be completely healed. But if I miss him, then I'm doomed to live like this forever. Come on, right? There's a sense of urgency. Wouldn't you agree with me? Like, I got to make this a priority. So in the beginning, she went as fast as she could. <clears throat> Maybe she went by horse. Maybe whatever they had in those days. But when she got into the city, people were everywhere. She had to get off the horse. She can't do that. And she probably did her best to move as fast as she could to get to where Jesus was. Then you're, you know, you're thinking, he's walking, he's moving. So I've got to get, you know, where he is. I can't, if he's walking this way and I start moving through the crowd here, he's going to be past me. So he, she's calculating. For me to meet Jesus, he's walking, i got to get up there. Are you with me? And the crowds are moving and she's pushing through and she's a woman in those days. Are you with me? How many know she had a lot against her? A lot against her. <clears throat> Excuse me. But she went to where Jesus was. And when she could go no further, she got on her hands and knees and crawled. And when she could go no further, she basically wiggly wormed. Just, and just at that moment, she, she did it. How hungry was she? Amen? How, how, how much did it mean to her? How important was it to her? What kind of priority was it to her? Come on. And she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, virtue flowed out of him. Power flowed out of him. And he looked around to see who touched me. And his disciples mocked him. You're being pushed and shoved by every single person here. And he says, no, somebody touched. Me. How many know God recognizes faith? Somebody touched me with faith. Because as soon as they touched me, I felt the power. Was that power available for everybody? Yes. It's sad when you think about it that she was the only one that we have recorded of that had that power received into her life. Others were pushing and touching. What were they doing it for? Just to see the preacher? Just to, you know, experience it? To, tell, to sell t-shirts? What were they there for? Casual? Well, let's see if he can do anything. Let, let's see a magic show. Come on, pull a, pull a rabbit out of a hat. Let me, let me see what you can do. I've traveled all over and I've seen others, what they do. I was on the shores of, of the Jordan and I heard John the Baptist and boy, what a sight he was. And I don't know what he was talking about, but boy, uh, you know, I've been, at every, I've been at every show. I've been at every, you know, event. I mean, oh, there are people in every walk of life. One woman and what she went through to touch the hem of his garment. And she was completely and, and radically healed and transformed and Jesus said to her daughter don't be afraid go your way amen enjoy the blessing of God in your life and tell other people how great God was to you amen so energizing it's up to you and it's up to me equipping ourselves through prayer specifically one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God amen you just begin to talk to him based on his word. Amen? The Bible says God is attentive to our cry. So it's not necessarily talking about crying. It's talking about when we speak to him. When we speak, 
He's as close as the mention of his name. So we say, Father, I thank you that I am your son or your daughter because of the blood of Jesus. And you have his complete and undivided attention. And then you just talk to him. Amen. I thank you for every blessing in my life. I thank you that you always make a way for me. That's what the Bible says. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that you've got me. Hallelujah. I did the study. It's on the table there. That you go before me. That you're on my right hand. You're my left hand. Amen. You're above me. You got my back. And underneath of the everlasting arms, I'm completely surrounded. I'm in the secret place of the Most High, the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you for that. It means everything to me. Come on. It's not hard. Hallelujah. But you have to have the word. Because there are some people not making fun or being or, or, or offensive, but there are some people think that God's their problem. So they'll come, oh God, please lift this this pain off of my life that you that you brought into my life. Please, I'll, I'll do anything. You, you, I'll do anything. I'll I'll, I'll 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 cry. I'll beat myself. No, no, no. That's why you got to do it in light of the Word of God. And how I many a lot of people do that? They think somehow they can merit this. They can earn this. You remember when, when, when the Simon the sorcerer, and Nick talked about that too, when, uh, when Simon the sorcerer saw, he was used in sorcery, made a lot of money at it. And when he saw the disciples lay hands on people and get filled with the Holy Ghost, he said, oh, can I buy that? Can I buy that gift, that ability to do that? And they said to him, your money perish with you. Why? Because his heart wasn't right. Because he was outside of the word of God. No, the Bible says freely you receive, freely give. But first you've got to receive. I've told people all the time, no disrespect. I don't ever mean to be disrespectful. But I said, a, a minister, whoever they are, can only give you what they have. And if they don't have a personal living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, they can't offer it to you. Do you understand? So all they can offer you is the best of what they can produce. And that's not going to, it's not going to transform you. It's not going to change you. It might, it might tickle your ear. You might say, oh, that was good. I like that. But it's not going to build anything eternal enduring in you. Oh, he's such a good speaker, eloquent. I love the stories he tells or whatever the case may be. But there's no word of God. And so you go your way and you think to yourself, oh, that was, that was good. I like that. You know, I feel good about myself. There's a lot of that going on in the world today, my brothers and sisters. Be happy with yourself. You know, you don't have to change. Just, just you know, be content with who you are and, 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 and you know, be right and live right. Or not even live right. Live, be, be okay with the way you live or whatever alternative lifestyle you have. Be, be okay with that, you know, because after all, everything is okay. No, it's not. Amen. Brother Hagin used to call that ignorance gone to seed. Amen. Why? Because you're way outside the word of God. You're way outside of the word and the will of God. And when you're outside of the word and the will of God, it's not that God is mad at you, but you're walking in darkness. And you're just setting yourself up for, for judgment. Are you with me? Because the devil, the Bible says, roams about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Amen? Amen? And so when people are outside of the word of God, they're in that place where the devil will overwhelm them and devour, begin the devouring process. Well, I guess God's trying to teach me something. Many of the afflictions of the righteous... No, the Bible says, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. That's the danger of misquoting the scriptures. You know? Come on, there's so many others. It's You know, Brother Hagin is my favorite author. Amen. And he wrote a book, I think we may have them in the bookstore, called Right and Wrong Thinking. Because the Bible says, as a man or woman think in their heart, think in their, you know, think in their, that's, that's what they are. The way we think dictates how we, how we, well, it dictates how we think, but it dictates how we talk, 
dictates how we live. Amen? What we're, what we're thinking. So it's very important that we think right. So that's why the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove in your life, in your own experience, how good the Word of God is. Amen? So that's what the first step is. Build confidence in Him through His Word. And then energize. Equip yourselves through prayer, one-on-one -on -one fellowship with Him. I shared with you before, I'm, I'm not going to get very far, pick up next time, I don't mind. But David became an expert in this. How many know David's life was far from an easy life? David was one of many brothers, all brothers, boy that must have been fun, and he was the youngest. He basically was told all his life, you are worthless. His brothers went on to do all kinds of exploits. They were physically fit. They got in the military. They won all kinds of ribbons. They became proficient in what they did. And David basically was sent out to watch over the sheep and was forgotten. So much so, you know the story, when Solomon, led by the Spirit of God, came to Jesse's house, which is their father, and said, I am here at God's direction to anoint the next king of Israel. And so Jesse began to parade his sons one by one. And Solomon, led by the Spirit of God, says, no, not him. And, and, and Jesse's like, look at this guy. He's like perfect. He's got the perfect V body, you know, thin waist, tight butt behind, come on. You know, muscular thighs, legs. Look, look at him. He's, he's, a, he's an Adonis. He's a perfect specimen. Rugged, flowing hair, you know, the whole thing. And, and, and Solomon says, no. Nah. And one by one. And then Solomon says, because God sees different from the way men see. And when he got to the end of his sons, Solomon said, don't you have any others? And Jesse said, Nope, you've seen them all. That's how much he thought about David. Until finally, he remembered, oh, wait, wait, wait. I got a worthless thing out in the field there. Let, let me bring him in. You wonder how many meals David ate out there while he and his father, the father and the brothers ate. You wonder, right? But you see, David was doing something that the brothers were not doing. He was spending one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God. God became his shepherd. Psalm 23. Are you with me? And so when David was called before, here he comes. He's ruddy, meaning he's reddish and maybe freckly. And he's, he's, he's torn from being out there working, but he's small. And as soon as he walks in, the Spirit of God within Solomon leaps within him and he knows and he opens a flask of oil and he pours it on David's head to the, to the chagrin of his whole family, his father, and I don't know if there was a mother there, it doesn't mention, but the brothers pours the whole thing, declaring this is the future king of Israel. And then he says, because God sees different from men. Men see the outward appearance. God sees the heart. That should stir us, amen? amen. He's not interested in the open show. He's not interested in what you can say. God, God is not moved by our salesmanship. Are you with me? Amen. He sees the intents of our hearts, and that's what the real you, that's what speaks to him. So that needs to be renewed to the word of God and through that energizing prayer. Father, my heart's desire is to honor you. My heart's desire is to be a blessing to you. I do want with all my heart, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I am your servant. Thank God I'm your son, but I'm also your servant. So when you give me direction, I will not add my two cents or take anything away. I will simply do what you tell me to do because ultimately that will bring the greatest blessing in my life and the greatest blessing through my life to other people. Hallelujah. It's called a win-win. Be with me, my brothers and sisters. And so what happened, David? You know, later on, you remember what happened with Goliath? Remember the story? Jesse sent him with, a, with some supplies for his brothers. 
And when he got there, you would think his brothers would say, you know what, David, that means a lot to us. You know what, Harry, thank you for the offer of getting me a hot tea. I appreciate that. Well, how were they to him? They were so nasty to him. Their image of him is he was useless, he was worthless, he was of no value. And how many know that was not David's image of himself? How know the only thing that can change your image of you is God and God's holy word and spending time with him? It would have been easy of David, would have been easy of that woman with the issue of blood or any of the people that are, that are spoken of in the word of God to just buy the lie because after all, I've heard it and heard it and heard it and heard it and heard it. Are you with me? But it's important that you don't buy the lie. It's important that you know who you are. We sang it this morning. Amen. Amen? And I'm a son. I'm a daughter of Almighty God. I am victory walking. Come on. I am a living, moving, breathing blessing because of whose I am and who is alive inside of me. Amen? I will do everything I can to live in overflow power. But at the very least, I will spend time so at least I can live out of 50%. Come on. Right? right? Or live out of... How many know you can get pretty much use out of a, out of a, of a thing at 50%? You, you can get a lot of use out of it at 50%. But eventually it's going to drop. Yeah. I have a phone over there. It's an, a droid. And um, they're built, when they were built, they were built where you can't access the battery. Go figure, right? But the battery died. And my son, God bless him, figured it out, bought a kit, opened the back up, and replaced the battery. I think he's done it two, two, two times, three times, you know? God bless him, he's patient and, uh, to do it. And he replaced the battery. And then you gotta tape it closed as they sell you the whole thing. You know, I can plug my phone in now, honestly now, and I can use it, but in an hour or two, I can just watch that battery power drop, 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 drop. Now, they have new iPhones. Their iPhones, they'll tell me all the time, rub it in, you know? Oh man, I, I can go all day on that thing. Sometimes two days. Well, good for you. I may get three or four hours before I gotta, I, I must. If I expect that phone to work, I must plug it in. So I have a charger in my office, I have a charger in the church, I have a charger in my car, and every opportunity I get, I plug it back in. And it's a constant reminder to me, that's my phone, it's called a droid, it's a Motorola droid, okay? Whatever it is. But that always reminds me, that's, that's me, that's me. Amen? And, and, and especially when there's a bigger draw on me, when pressure comes, when, when things come, seem like I want to jump on my shoulders and things begin, how many know I'm, I'm draining faster? I need to plug in faster. And I need to stay. And, and usually when I plug it in, I watch it. And if it gets up to 50%, I can use the phone. But all the faster it's going to drop again. I can't tell you how many times that phone registers 1% with a, in a, with a red circle and a line across it, 1%. That's letting me know it's going to die any moment, okay? If I don't plug it in, it will become useless to me. It's just an illustration to help you understand, amen? You're not a phone, you're not a battery, come on. You're a human being created in the image of God and he's your father. And he longs to fellowship with you because he knows you need him for salvation, for every moment of every day. I'm going to mention it. We'll talk about it next week. I did tell you to go here, didn't I? It's staring me in the face. John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. 
If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withereth. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue you in my love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's interesting. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. But notice, we need the vine. We can't live without the vine. But you want to see an interesting other side? Fruit is born on the branches. So just as much as we need him, he needs us. This is a family thing. You understand? It was never intended to be God's going to do it all. No, he's the head. We're the body. And the body is where the hands and the feet are. Are you with me? So that's why we, we, we spend time in his word. We spend time in fellowship one-on-one -on -one to become, think like him, talk like him. And then we realize our, our main purpose is to bear not just fruit, but much fruit. And what's the fruit for? It's not for the vine, not for the branches. It's that others can come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. So others might see. Amen? Amen. So you see the cycle. And then we have, we're given the opportunity to say, come on, it doesn't matter. How many knows there are many places in the Word of God that talks about grafting? You know what grafting is? Is when you take a, a, a branch and you slice the tree and you put it in, it's almost scientific, a certain way, and sometimes they put wax so it doesn't bleed and they wrap it in such a way. And given time, that foreign branch will begin to draw sustenance, Cray. Okay? Now this could be an apple tree. But that branch is coming from a peach tree. And if you put that, graft it, and do a good job, how many know that branch will bear peaches? Amen. And the Bible talks about that God is an expert grafter. The vine has more than enough nutrients flowing through it. That is the Lord Jesus. So that every single branch can be grafted into an olive branch. If you, take a, if you take an apple tree and you do it right and you put an olive branch into it, it'll produce olives. Isn't that amazing? But that's how God is. That's how, care, how he cares for his people. That he's willing to take you if you want it and, and graft you into the vine. And you begin to bear. Wouldn't, wouldn't you like to find a tree like that? How big would your basket be if you were to find a tree that was yielding apples, peaches, olives, and the list goes on and on? I don't know about you, but I might just stay there. Come on, you know? I dreamed last night that I went to a wedding. I'm looking forward to going to a wedding. I'm doing good trying to lose weight walking all over Kingdom Come, you know, at Heaven and Farm this summer. Or this winter here but um, my dream was you know I could make do with the appetizers yeah. I don't know but I, I like a good provolone the super sod olives that you know peppers keep the uh, I don't mind keep the, um, the whatever the prime rib and the uh, and the asparagus yeah. keep it you know Keep the chicken or whatever case may be. Just let me at that at the um, cocktail yeah. uh, bar, whatever. I'm easy. We used to love going to Charlie Brown's. I don't think there's any left because of the salad bar. Right. You just go to the salad bar with a plate and just, you know, That's you need more olives. Right. Come on, you need more peppers. Come on, come on. I emptied out your olive peppers. You with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. So how would it be? How many of that's our Father's pleasure? That, you, that people could come to the body of Christ. That's why he was so upset. That's why he was so upset that he made a whip and beat them. He says, you have made my father's house, which was supposed to be a house of prayer, 
to a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. People are supposed to come here and experience the peace of God, the joy of God, the victory of God, the wisdom of God, the encouragement of God, the healing of God. And in other words, branches flowing and, 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 and fruit on all the branches. And people come from every kindred and tongue and say, God is so amazing. And help yourself. Right? But they had twisted it. They weren't producing fruit. They had made up their mind, it's all for me. And I'll turn it inward. What I can make off of you. Yeah, I'll give you, you know, a rotten, a rotten fig, but it's going to cost you. That's exactly what they were doing. They were selling compromised sacrifices. They had departed from the word of God. They were walking in the wrong spirit. Correct? How many know it's available to all of us? That's why we have to make up our mind. No, no, no. That's not who I am. I, I, that's not who I choose to be. You with me, my brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. So we'll pick up next time right from here. Amen. Remember building confidence in him through his word and energizing yourself. My brothers and sisters, I can't do it for you. A husband can't do it for the wife. You, you can't do it for your children. You've got to teach them. You've got to encourage them. Pray for one another because everybody has to do it for themselves. Are you with me? But the dividends are remarkable to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Speaking in tongues, building yourself up on your most holy faith. When we speak in tongues, it's a whole other subject. I don't want to go there, but we're not praying to the devil. We're speaking to God, spirit to spirit. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. We don't know what somebody else's needs are. So we pray in the spirit and God understands and God begins to do what's necessary to move on behalf of those that we're praying for. It's a remarkable thing. Are you with me? Amen. It's the truth. Hallelujah. It's one of those ways of praying. Amen. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for the time that we spend together with you. It's everything to us. And we'll pick up from here next week. We'll get into it deeper. And we are so grateful for these times. These times, I like to say, times of refreshing. Times where we can be washed by the wondrous word of God. And by the wonderful Holy Spirit who leads us into the knowledge of our wonderful Jesus, our Savior, and our wonderful, marvelous Heavenly Father. We are grateful. We are so thankful. Jesus, for the sacrifice that you paid to welcome us home. We thank you for it. We rely on you, Holy Spirit, to help us to do everything we spoke of today. And we praise you and thank you for good fruit born out of it in every heart and every life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, we pray your blessing upon your people as they go. May they be fruitful in everything they do. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Love having you. Wednesday is the book of Revelation. The church is open. And uh, we're about in 14, I guess we are. And it's been excellent. Uh, if you can't come, then watch us. We do our best to live stream it at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Okay? God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody.